Hey guys, here we are. What are we doing? We're doing now. When are we doing it? We're doing uh, XTC 3D coat, which as far as I can tell is mostly just a two-part resin. Uh, but I was at, at the store that sells Smooth On products yesterday or the other day. I don't know. It was some, some day and it's quite a drive. So I had quite a list of things to try while I was there and I thought I'd give this a try. Um, so last time I did some smoothing over and sculpting on this piece back here. I used uh, Freeform Air and just kind of smooshed it over, just kind of brushed it back and forth with my, my fingers. Let's uh, see how good this looks. Hey man, Morty! You can hear, can't hear nothing. Okay, let's see if I can fix that. Oh, just you? Yeah, don't forget to open your ears or you won't be able to hear. Okay, so I can still definitely make out some print lines there. It covered pretty well, but the more you build up, the more of the detail you're going to lose, right? That is the tricky balance with this stuff. So I've got all these details sculpted in here. And so the question is, do I just smooth it all over and then like re-sculpt to get that stuff back? Or I don't know what the alternative is. So I'm going to try this and maybe this will magically um, only fill in the cracks that I don't want to see and leave the ones that I do. Uh, very doubtful. This is going to be particularly tricky. It's hard to see because it's black, I know, but... Because um, all those little holes are... Yeah, I just... I don't know. We're, we're going to find out. That's what's going to happen today. We're going to find out. Here's... So this is the part that I just put a, a very defined layer. I just... And then I pressed my glove in it to get that texture, sanded it down, primed it, and that's fine. But that's essentially completely sculpting over the piece. Um, if there's a way to avoid that, that'd be great. This part I sanded a little bit, and then I sprayed a ton, like a super thick coat of primer. You can see it's not even quite dry yet, but um, yeah, that's just not gonna, not gonna cover them lines. This part it's actually a really interesting texture. I, I like it, <laughs> but uh, it's also clearly an artifact of 3D printing. So because of that, I don't like it. Um, yeah. So I'm still, still kind of feeling things out and you guys are coming along for the journey. Oh, your ear flaps were closed. Yeah, make sure to unflap them flaps. I think uh, this this is still raw. All I did was uh, put a spray primer over it. Um, and I'm wondering, I don't. There's no way to lighten this. I don't have a white. I wonder. I guess I could mix. Well, I, I would love it if this was gray. So as I primed over this. I would be able to like clearly make out how it is covering. Let me see if it says anything about. I, I read through here quickly and I saw that it did say you could mix stuff into it, but I think it was just saying tint. And tinting, okay, here we go. Uh, can be colored with so strong color tints, color pigments, or ignite color pigments. Hmm, well, all I have is so strong, and so strong, as far as I know, cannot lighten the material. So, I guess we'll just go clear for now. 
I mean, I'm almost sure that if I mixed in some white, just acrylic paint, it would be fine. But, I don't want to risk it. So it's um, two to one mix. Pretty standard. Oh, hey, Kenzo. Sorry, I didn't see you there. The, uh, your name happens to be dark red on my black background uh, on my chat thing. Uh, mixed glitter. Herpes of the crafting world. Uh, that's an idea. I don't know if it's an idea that I like. I've managed to avoid herpes all my life, and I'd love to keep it that way. The trick, by the way, is just to, you just marry your your first girlfriend. And then after you divorce her, you marry your second girlfriend. That's how I did it, and I've avoided herpes this whole time. I'm sure I have a giant box full of mixing cups. I just have no idea where they are now. Um, well, since I'm just gonna do a little test, I guess I could just mix in the cup. So if I want, oh, here we go. Okay, so it's, let's say we're gonna do 20 milliliters. That would mean uh, if it was half and half, it would be 10 and 10, but it's 2 to 1. Oh man, this is such simple math, and it's breaking my brain. Nine months? Hey, thanks, Van Morta! You, you are awesome! You are such a excellent box. The gift that keeps on giving. Super appreciate it. Uh, okay. So if I did five of this, then I would do double that, which would be 10, which would bring me to 15. Okay. You know what? That's probably a fine amount for the kind of experimenting I want to do anyway. Okay. Five and 15 it is. that my table is not even. So this is definitely a lot more liquidy than regular uh, two-part epoxy. My guess is that it's, because it, you, can, you can thin out two-part epoxy, I believe, with just alcohol. Um, so I think I'm gonna do a test where I where I do that and do a side by side comparison. I'm not sure how expensive this was. It's on my receipt, which isn't my car, uh, but I should check it. I don't feel like this was maybe 15 or 20 bucks, but it is quite a bit of stuff. Okay, so we did five. We're doing another 10, which takes us to 15. Yes. So I gotta say it out loud again. Anything with numbers, man, mess me up. Ooh, this is very thick. Boxes love, boxes life.
one thing the instructions recommended that I think I'm gonna do is make a little tray to spread out the mix because it has an exothermic reaction, meaning the hotter it gets, the faster it sets. So if it's all compacted together, it's gonna set really fast. Canthian Angler says, Hey Josh, finally cut your stream. Just wanted to thank you for the sculpting guides you have on YouTube. They're really helpful. Hey, you're welcome. Thanks for, uh, thanks for catching me. Glad you finally did. Hi, Aletha. So excited. I'm starting my two week staycation, quote unquote. It's not really, it's a two weeks of taking care of my wife after she gets surgery on Monday but she's a pretty low maintenance person so it's probably gonna be mostly art which is good because oh man I have so much stuff to do I sent AJ a rice ball very nice yeah here's hoping we're kind of on pins and needles about the surgery because um She's get, she had her left arm done, I don't know, six or eight months ago. And this is now time for her right arm. And unfortunately, over the past several, uh, well, I guess the last month or so, her left arm has now been hurting her way more than her right. So that's the one she had surgery on, and she's trying to get a hold of her surgeon and be like, uh, should we work on the left again? Because, like, if she gets her, her right one done on Monday, she's going to have to use her left hand for everything, obviously. And if everything she does hurts her, she's going to be handless. That's going to be rough. Not completely handless, but, you know, like, she can't un... Un you know, take off lids. Uh, it's it's already difficult for her to even just like scroll on her computer on social media. So yeah, I mean, it's not not good times. It's 1:30 a.m. Oh man. Uh, is she gonna be okay? Well. I mean, she has a degenerative disease, which in 99% of the times just gets worse and worse as time goes on. So, uh, psychologically, I think she's going to be okay. She's a super tough cookie and has an amazing attitude and wants to use all of the experiences that she has with her pain and disease to help others, to educate them about it and find other people who have it and make them feel not so alone. And so, I mean, She's got about as good an attitude as you possibly can, given the circumstances. But physically, is she going to be alright? No. Hopefully the surgery helps. Um, they're pretty much just kind of stopgap kind of surgeries. It's like, well, your connective tissue is falling apart. We'll slow that down as much as we can. thought of getting robo arms you know I would love it if our technology got to that point soon enough to help her that would be awesome just remove her all the parts of her body that suck and replace them with robot versions I think she would be on board with that Now I'm doing this test on the back of the head that is not going to be seen. I 
think I'll do a couple of these holes just to get a feel for because it's all right if some of them get screwed up. Paintbrush, I don't care about ruining. This looks like a good candidate. Well, props to her for holding her head up. It's, she's the one going through all the pain. I help what I, when I can. Mostly just being there for her. This is the podcast interview I did will be out on the 5th. I talk a little bit about you and your mom's books. Oh, sweet. Thanks for the shout out. Speaking of shout outs, everyone should check out Aletha Baki's books. She's made a bunch and they're really fun. Aletha, you should post a link to your books right here, right now. So no matter what, this is going to keep settling in those holes which is fine they don't need to be super deep anyway rest was incoherent babbling were you speaking in tongues on a podcast again mumble until people leave me alone and go hide oh I see yeah that's a good strategy yep the very nearest Amazon page to you Here's a here's a place where I probably want I don't think I don't think another part plugs into there. Actually, come to think of it, there might be a, a route that goes into there, so I probably don't wanna have that totally filled up as resin. But I can also sand and drill as I need to after after this process. have about 10 minutes of time with this so probably gonna need to speed this up a bit Kumar dot Mahay. Subscribe. Thank you. Good sir or madam or somewhere in between. Let's see what happens when I put this over. If it makes a difference if it goes over a piece that's already been primed. Primer does not fill in much at all, so I doubt it will make much of a difference. But we shall find out. For most of these areas where it's just like ridiculously messy, the best thing to do is just uh, jam some clay in there. But I'm just gonna see how it ends up. 
Cactus Resin. Also be a valid strategy to just paint this over areas that are particularly egregious and then maybe sanding and filing the rest of it will help me to maintain the detail I doubt it but it's worth a try Yeah, I'm streaming. Oh, so, I, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna go for a walk. Uh, if you wait a bit, I can go with you. Well, what is a bit? Now? Like an hour. Yeah. All right, you guys. Remind me in an hour to stop and go on a walk with my little wifey. It's your responsibility. You, if my marriage goes south, it's because you guys didn't remind me. And doing the primer on here makes such a big difference in being able to tell where some of the um, support pieces are still still being naughty. Sticking around when they're not invited. Okay, let's make sure we're wrapped up by 5.30. That's right, there is real life streaming, isn't there? <coughs> we could stream our walk. Sounds sounds riveting.
Don't forget to hold her hand. Okay. Well, actually, I, I can't hold her hand. Her hand is one of the things she needs to get surgery on because everything hurts it. does not need to be there. I don't think. support you can't fool me I would just not want to come out safe to test up here since I'm pretty sure I'm just going to be coating all of it with clay and giving it a totally different texture. Since I'm thinking about it, let's do a test with just regular old epoxy thinned out with alcohol. I don't want the 90 second one, that's for sure. 
Come on, don't I have a 20 second? I mean, 20 minute. Here we go. Uh, da, 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 this is 30 minutes. Okay, cool. Kenzo says, I have uh, that stuff you using. It's pretty hard graph, uh, graph sanding and filling in layer lines. I hope all goes well on Monday. I know what it's like to get surgery, rib cage, totally rebuilt with screws. Oh, wow. That sounds rough. Motorcycle accident? That would be my first guess. Indeed, alcohol that thins epoxy. Should the alcohol is water free. Uh, it might be the percentage. Let's. You know what? Maybe it actually says on here. Polyethylene or polypropylene plastics. Hmm. Wonder if I doubt that 3D printing stuff is either of those. But if it has problems, it's the first place to look, I guess. Huh. Yeah, that doesn't say anything about pinning it. Places that it is done to thin epoxy, so it gets thin places, but I haven't seen how much to its ratio. Uh, you will need isopropyl alcohol, but it needs to be 99% pure. Uh, this is 91%. It's hard to say the amounts. Uh, it's just hit or miss. I use 15 minute epoxy and it will mix two parts together in a cup, and then I thin it using small amounts of alcohol to get enough. This guy says 91% Walgreens and you mix as needed. The alcohol evaporates and leaves behind the epoxy. I believe mine. I mix mine until it's about like cream or milk. Pretty runny, but thicker than water. Alright, well, glad to hear some people have luck with 91%. And while I'm here, let's uh, let's do our shoutouts. We've got. Claire Butler on Twitch, on YouTube, Al Shaw on YouTube, Piwat Panyajanga Thanga Havorn, uh, Aldis Emerson, Sebastian Aris, Hairboy32001, Mr. Spark Stein, Resilience RL, 
Ike uh, Ike Toloff, Rob Roy McGregor. Oh boy, this one has a four that I think is supposed to be in no fourth RRS. I'm just gonna go with that. Melissa Taylor, uh, Panda Whacker videos, Steve uh, Clevenger, BJ Crawford, To Manly 1985. Barbie Perez, uh, Caprice Adams, hi Caprice, over on Twitch, uh, Jorn van der Butte on YouTube, also Rodney Mc, McCor McCormack, uh, Cheap and Juicy, always nice to have both uh, attributes, Jonathan Dilio, Barry Coates, uh, Dinah Nikonchuk, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, Mahesh Kumar Mahai something something. Hi everyone and welcome. Uh, you you damaged your ribs at the gym. Okay, well I don't know if that's more or less manly than a motorcycle accident. like waiting 20 seconds for everyone else. Beetle power. Congrats. Beetles are awfully darn fast, but also harder to control. Okay. I'm pretty sure I have droppers somewhere. Oops. Longest time was 27. You feed her a diet of Pop Tarts and Cuddles. And that, that makes her easier to control. Is that what you're saying? Order to a third alcohol. Definitely made it pretty runny.
hopefully I'll be able to remember that I did this top part with the epoxy and this lower part with the uh, Ecstasy 3D. Curious to see if one levels out better than the other. Yeah, looks like I'm going to need to ruin another little brush. Thing I definitely want to avoid is it pooling up around these letters and making them like have a bevel between the letters and the surface. Which is what I was thinking. What I might do is like hacksaw them off and glue them on again after I do the surface. Of course, that would be a whole nother obnoxious procedure. And so, if I don't have to do that obnoxious procedure, that would be ideal. get done before we're done with the stream today is is drum roll Okay, here we go. This is what's happening. We last left off. I was uh, fixing the mother mold here by putting some plastic paste 2 on top of it. And it seemed to work. Uh, this piece cracked off, but it seems to be on there very, very well. Secured. Same with this one. This is the Dragon Ball PvP game for the festivals is fun, but I don't get any treasure for doing it. Uh, ben Mortis says, most are just AP. I done like doing it. You need treasure to motivate you? Yeah, you're like a dragon. Once I get my cap on events, I generally stop doing the event. Almost at 32k. Wow. 
That's more than I have, so congrats. Uh, let's see, so... Things I hope to accomplish is a mother mold that can be held tight very well with rubber bands. You need your treasure so you can hoard it. Yes. I understand. Uh, let's see. And then the other thing that's important is that in here there's going to be a rubber sleeve that goes between the sculpture and the mother mold and so I want to make sure that I'm not making it so that the little lips of the rubber are going to snag on anything and not be able to fully seat into place. I'm just making sure there's sufficient bevels around these little convolutions. Pouring the rubber up to, up to here. Okay, so one thing I might do then is I don't know how I, I keep wanting to resurface some of these inner parts. Like this little part here, see how it's got those kind of creases and bubbles. The rubber is going to get kind of caught in there, but it's nowhere near where the actual sculpture is. So if, if the rubber tears a little bit there, it really doesn't matter. Question mark? Pretty sure it doesn't matter. Still have a little bit of this clean clay stuck in there. Which is not a big deal. I mean, it's it's not going to in inhibit the cure of the rubber or, or anything. These little bubbles, though, could be problematic. Sleep the last few weeks? Oh man, that's a lot of sleep. Glad I was here to wake you up though. to go with pouring rubber over the back first then more to some parts of being old suck but man I really enjoy 
how much better I understand life. Like there's just a general wisdom that you gain as you age that I would not trade. Okay, so essentially, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the wrapping off of this, clean up all the edges so that they go exactly on where they need to go on the sculpture, and the mother mold goes on, and I pour rubber in there, and that creates the negative for the actual sculpture. Which means that this part is gonna be the first one to be covered in rubber. Okay. And I think so. Th this is what I'm a little unclear on. If I have this sculpture out. a good way to do it because if I just leave this in place hmm, no that probably won't work because I need to I need to have it out and pressed against the sculpture to be able to get those lines perfect and then get it back in I think Either way, I know I need to get the wrapping off of her, but I want to keep it on the front part. I guess I guess I could just unwrap the whole thing and just put some down here. Thoughts on the controversial Gillette commercial? <gasps> dun, 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 controversy! A controversy from like a month ago? Uh, I thought it was extremely silly that people were upset at that commercial. That is my thoughts. My perspective was commercial, it's made by a company company wants to identify where it lies on the ever-widening divide in the culture wars that are going on, wants to be seen as a on the progressive side, and it did it by putting the progressive message in a pretty benign form, which is like, hey look, here's what historically has been pretty normal for dudes to do, and um, and it's pretty awful, and maybe maybe it'd be better if uh, other dudes called those dudes out for their behavior and was like, "Hey, stop being obnoxious." That'd be nice. It was it was really weird to me seeing how many people thought the commercial was like yelling at men, like saying, "All oh, men are terrible people," when it clearly showed like here are some men doing terrible things and here are other men correcting those men like if it had been all men doing terrible things and then like a woman coming and saying that's bad like then I could see where they were coming from but I don't know. I'm clearly becoming a big fat lib so I'm gonna side with the libs It's just, you know what, I, I think most people in their heart of hearts wants what's best for everyone. And all these arguments come down to 
being super sure about what you think is best for everyone, the best policy. And the conservative side has their policy suggestions and the liberals have their policy suggestions and both sides are telling the other side that they're evil for not agreeing with exactly the, the policies that they propose. And it's dumb. I wish we didn't have to all be dumb. Gorilla glue pen. Does this need water? All surfaces must be clean. Damp it. Lightly dampen one surface with water. Okay, so it does. Glue it. Clamp it. Okay, this is not what I want. I want just regular old super glue. Why not have regular old super glue? Add that to my list. Jewelry and metal glue. I'll bet this will work. Fan Morta says, yeah, thin-skinned males who can't get over women won't touch them, so they get upset when called out on it. <laughs> That's right, Aletha. Humans are dumb except for you. Uh, so, here's the thing. If I repair this little broken bit here by super gluing it together chances are there's going to be a little seam in there I mean if I just glue it and then stick it back in the mold um, as opposed to gluing it and then sculpting over it yeah I better do that it's going to set me back a bit but that's okay because otherwise it's going to have this tiny little seam in every piece that I cast and then I'm going to want to clean it up in every one of those. So I'm going to be not impatient. Letha says, oh, it was on my mind because I always look at the person's page when they send me a friend request and they were ranting about never buying from Gillette again and that there needs to be more masculinity and that men are getting weak, etc. And that was a big old red flag to me not to accept. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there are many people that I love and respect who actually feel that way as well. I just, I, I just so don't understand it. It is, it is awfully amusing, in a sense, to see how easily triggered people who are, um, who, people who make fun of snowflakes for being triggered, how easily they, in turn, are triggered. Everyone's triggered these days. Probably has a lot to do with the nature of our communication in uh, social media, it's just everything is magnified and taken out of a context of a relationship. You know, like when you're in a relationship with a person, you're a friend or a neighbor or acquaintance or coworker, you have a little more context for who they are and where they're coming from and that they're just a normal person who's trying to live their life. And they're probably not terrible people. Uh, when that context is removed, then you just read the worst possible motives into what people are saying and then respond in kind and then they think the other side is full of people who have the worst possible motives, etc, etc. I'm 
Van Morta says, one of my favorite quotes, I love mankind and it's, oh, I love mankind, it's people I can't stand. Yeah. It's like the message, she is someone's mother, sister, daughter, but you mark all that out and just say she is someone that everyone equally and we don't have an issue. Yes, that is a nice ideal. I think I think one of the big differences I see between my former uh, very conservative self and my very, my current big fat liberal self is um, that idea that like if you just if everyone would just treat everyone equally, all this stuff about racism and sexism uh, would go away. So stop focusing on it, dummies, and it'll all go away. Um, but my opinion has changed to where I think it's disrespectful to, to tell that to people who are claiming to be suffering the things that you're saying don't exist anymore. Like, uh, if everyone just stopped talking about uh, races, there would be no racism anymore because I don't feel racist. It's like, well, good, that's part of, you know, that takes care of part of it, but not all of it. I think, I think everyone agrees that at some point we want to live in a post-racial world where racism and your, uh, your sex or gender or whatever doesn't, doesn't cause or is not part of, um, like, a problem in your life. But when there are enough people saying, hey, this is causing a problem in my life, I think it's just basic respect to be like, okay, well, I don't have your experience. I haven't lived your life. I don't have your race or sex or whatever. So who am I to tell you that you're wrong about that and that you should just ignore everything and, and feel like I feel about it? That's a very clumsy way to put it. Again, it gets down to just a, the same thing a conservative wants is what I want. We, we all want people to be kind and compassionate to each other. Just have different ideas of, of what that means and what's required to get to that point. Letha says, I'm not immune. My anxiety gets set off by some ridiculous stuff sometimes and it can be hard to get past a knee-jerk defensive reaction. Letha says, tribute and cuddles seem reasonable to me. <laughs> and Morta says, from what I see from living in the rural south, people stay conservative because they don't get out of their bubble and mingle with other cultures or ethnicities. That is a very common narrative that liberals say. Don't know if it's true or false. Could be part of it. In a way that's kind of disrespectful to a person's belief to pathologize them and say, you only believe that because you haven't, you know, had an, enough experience like I do. On the other hand, there are legitimately experiences in life that people have. Like say going to war and killing someone. You know what I mean? Like. That's an experience. If I had that, I would probably be a very different person. And man, I'm glad I don't have that experience. But for people who have had that experience, or let's pick a nicer one. Let's say giving birth, right? I can never know what it's like to give birth. But if I pretend like I do, that's disrespectful to people who have given birth. And to their opinion. So it works the other way. If a conservative says, you only believe liberal things because you moved to the big city and are just doing what everyone in the big city does, which is ignore real values of human decency and politeness and blah, blah, blah. They're kind of doing that same thing. So I think everyone is guilty of assuming that the life, the particular life they led that led them to their choices is the right one and people who haven't had those experiences um, are wrong because they haven't had those experiences.
but I'm an oddball. I'm, I fall in that, um, what is that? IT, NTJ, whatever that, uh, Briggs Meyer, is that what it's called? The uh, personality profile test. Like the one that I always get, like I've taken that test three or four times and it, I consistently get the same one, which is, I can't remember the letters, but it was the one that only 1% of the population has. And a big part of it is being a peacemaker or an ambassador, just like wanting people to get along and understand each other and not be mad at each other. So that's a big part of my psychological profile and probably has a lot to do with um, just wanting to hear other sides and learn from that. It doesn't seem to be a value that a lot of people hold, though a lot of people want to hold it and claim to hold it. I do not see evidence that they actually do. Alethe planned to never know what it's like to give birth. Hey, you know, if you know what you want, that's great. Speaking of, Trisha's baby is due soon. That's right, she's having another one. It's hard to keep up. She's, she's very efficient at making the babies. I guess she had to make up for all the other sisters who were really bad at it. Mortis says, I feel that way too. I try to see both views, but some views are just wrong, no matter how people try to spin it. I mean, I assume that there are right and wrongs, but often what is right and what is wrong depends on a lot of contextual things. And that a lot of times determining what's right and wrong requires having had certain experiences that I have not had. So I can't always say what's right or wrong. I can't sit there and rationally deliberate in an armchair and decide what is best for any particular person at any particular time. I'd like to try to help and brainstorm, give my perspective, but I'm usually very uncomfortable saying this is, you know, I've thought long and hard about it and now I know this is the right answer for everyone to do all the time. I don't do that anymore. Except really big picture stuff. I will still contend that it is best to live a life where you attempt to love others still think it's better to love than to hate but again what policy does that inform? Like, what is more loving and what is less loving? Then you get into debates about that. Ben Mortis says, yeah, I think everyone is going to say this or that is wrong no matter what side of the fence you land, but I think everyone would say genocide is wrong. I mean, unless you're Turkey. <laughs> Maybe very specific people in very specific times and places have, uh, have certainly advocated genocide and thought it was the right thing to do.
And yes, I would, I would always disagree with those folks and actively oppose them. What time are we at? Okay, we got five minutes to finish this, you guys. Five minutes. Ben Mortar redeemed to ask a question. All right, man, you now have the right. You've been given the right and privilege now that you spent those hearts. Congratulations, because normally I do not answer questions, you know that. I'm just kidding, I always answer questions, which means that's pretty much worthless. Four more minutes before walk time. I think I can do it. We'll see. Is that your question, Van Morda? Your question was a statement that it's time for me to go for a walk? <laughs> All right, thanks for uh, spending your hard-earned hearts to remind me to do what I said. shall do with my remaining clay. I have one minute. Dun 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 dun
Alright. Anything else I need to do with this clay last minute? Don't think so. Great. Uh, got a little bit left. Does Bo Mark need anything on here? Good, that's fine. Should I use this on the mold somewhere? Oh yeah, that's right. There was this little guy. This little guy. All right, Aletha, I will tell. Heather, hi for you. Slightly late, but not not too bad. Alright, going for a walk. Catch you guys tomorrow. Bye.